This video will review atomic structure for our chemistry unit. So starting with basic structure of an atom, um, labeling the different parts. In the center of the atom, first of all, it's called the nucleus. And there's two types of subatomic particles in the nucleus. You have the positively charged protons and the no charge, the neutral, neutrons. Around the nucleus in an atom, you have electrons that are sitting at different, we call them electron orbitals. Kind of layers, kind of like planets orbit the center of a solar system. Um, they revolve around in their area. Sometimes because they're not always exactly where we would predict them, this is also referred to as an electron cloud. Uh, a little summary table of the different parts you need to know as far as location goes, again, in, in the orbitals. Protons are in the nucleus, positive charge, they're in the nucleus. Charge-wise, electrons are negative, protons are positive, neutrons have no charge. And then as far as how much mass they have, um, protons and neutrons are both one atomic mass unit, also called one Dalton, and electrons are one two thousandth of that. So electrons are very light. In fact, most of the mass of an atom comes from these two. Most of the mass of your body is from your proteins, <laughs> your proteins, your protons and neutrons. Electrons are only a small contributor to all of that. Moving on, uh, atoms stick together to form molecules, connect together to form molecules. So if you have two hydrogen atoms, I kind of simplify the drawing, put an H in the middle where the nucleus is. Sticking together, that would be a molecule. Definition of a molecule is two or more atoms connected together. So this is a hydrogen molecule. This one here, you might be able to guess, two hydrogens and an oxygen, that's water. This one here has four hydrogens and a carbon, that's actually methane. Methane gas, the kind of gas that comes out of your stove that you cook with. Um, we usually don't draw molecules like this because it takes so much time with all the circles and stuff. We do simplified versions, so the, the connection between the two we draw as a line. And that connection has a name, they're called chemical bonds. Um, so instead of drawing the circles, we represent a water molecule like this if we wanted to kind of show the shape of a water molecule or the shape of a methane molecule, so chemical bonds. Um, when you look at the periodic table of the elements, uh, you get a box like this for each element with some information about it. You have to know the top, the bigger number, the number that's not a decimal, is the atomic number. And then the number in there that's a decimal, a very precisely measured um, number, is the atomic mass. Okay, so those are the two numbers in the periodic table. Well, what those are used for it allows us to figure out everything else about an atom, how many protons, neutrons, and electrons it has. So how do you do that? How are the subatomic particles, which are protons, neutrons, and electrons, actually figured out? So protons is equal to the number of protons, maybe I should add. Number of protons is equal to the atomic number. Which for lithium right here, the atomic number is three, so it has three protons. Electrons, the number of electrons, is always equal to how many protons are in an unreactive atom, unreacted atom, and if we're talking about lithium, if we continue this example, since there's three protons, the number of electrons it has is three as well. Now sometimes neutrons is the same as that, sometimes it's not. So you can't use, uh, oh, because this is three, it's, it's gonna be three too. You have to use a little bit more detailed way to get to the neutrons, and this is what gives people the most trouble. So to figure out the number of neutrons an atom has, the first thing you do is you round off the atomic mass. The atomic mass is that decimal number in there, and you have to follow rounding rules. So if it's 0.5 and, or more, you round up. So in this case, that rounds to seven. That's not the number of neutrons, though. That's just rounding this off. Then in Part B, it says, uh, oh, and I didn't say this. That rounded off number actually has a name. It's called the mass number. It is, together, the number of protons and neutrons an atom actually has. So for lithium, together, it has seven protons and neutrons total. But to get just the neutrons, you take, subtract the mass number, which is what we just got, 
from the atomic number. So let's look at how that might be. Again, here's lithium. Um, the Let's see, we want to subtract the mass number. Mass number is not this number. It's the rounded off atomic mass. That's the mass number. So for lithium, it'd be 7. I should have put these in a different order. I should put that on top. Um, and then for the, the other thing, we're supposed to subtract the mass number from the atomic number. The atomic number is 3. So if I follow my... Oh, I did that right. I just... Excuse me. So the mass number is 7. Put that on top. And the atomic number is 3. That goes on the bottom. And if you subtract those two, because remember, this number 7 is the protons and neutrons added together. So if you subtract those two, you're going to have 4, which is only the neutrons. So it has three protons, because we know that. That's the um, atomic number. And if you subtract the mass number from the atomic number, you get the number of neutrons, which in this case for lithium is 4. All right, last thing. Some atoms have isotopes of each other, which are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons. I'm not going to write that down. You have to have it memorized. But the example that you should know is carbon. Carbon comes in three forms, another way of saying isotopes. These are three isotopes of carbon. We call them carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. And if you look at them, well, how are they different? Well, since they're carbon, defined by the number of protons, if I looked at how many protons they have, every carbon has six. It's carbon. It has to have six. Which, and it's not really important right now, also means these all have six electrons, following the rule that we just went over up here. Electrons equals protons. But electrons really don't matter for our discussion of isotopes. Atoms of the same elements with different numbers of neutrons. Different numbers of neutrons. Well, how do we get the neutrons? Well, we just did that right here. To kind of compare these, this number at the top, actually, when we write an isotope and we put the number up at the top there, it is the mass number. It is that rounded off number right there. So the, the, the carbon that you see represented in the periodic table is actually the most common isotope, the most common one. That's the one they put there. But carbon-13 would actually have a little bit different um, atomic mass number, decimal number. But these are the rounded off mass numbers for the other isotopes. So to see an isotope of carbon, which are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons, you take the mass number, like we did in this problem right here, 12. You subtract the number of protons. Carbon-12 has six neutrons. If you want to see how many neutrons are in here, take the mass number of carbon-13, subtract the number of protons. It's always going to be six protons because that's carbon. Carbon always has six. But if you subtract these two, you get seven protons. For carbon-14, you subtract these two. Carbon-14 has eight neutrons. So again, say the definition. Atoms of the same element, they're all carbon because they all have six protons, with different numbers of neutrons. Um, sometimes, some of the forms, one or more, may be actually what we call radioactive. And that's where they have what they say is an unstable nucleus because there's so many extra neutrons in there, it can't hold its shape. And what will happen is over time, the radioactive atom will, and the word for it is decay, and some of these neutrons will break down, maybe turn into protons, maybe release energy, and that energy is radiation, which actually can be hazardous to living things. So we'll learn more about this in a bit. But that's your review of atomic structure for now.